tonight, Josh Flowers returns to face two more CFIs in a battle of aviation trivia. Right now on Prop Quiz. Welcome to Prop Quiz, the live game show where we find out who knows aviation trivia best. I'm Ethan Berg. We've got a great competition lined up tonight between three CFIs or certificated flight instructors. Back tonight from San Marcos, Texas to defend his title as the winner of last week's show, Aviation 101 himself, Josh Flowers. Our second contestant today is a CFI out of Michigan and a Czech pilot in Civil Air Patrol, Steve Tupper. And from our stomping grounds here in Atlanta, Georgia, we've got an instructor who's taught many students to fly, including his own children, Nathan Ballard. Now, what would a game show be without a prize? Today's winner is going to go home with a cash prize of $500 and the chance to defend his title on a future show. And our runner-up is again going to walk away with $200. Everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. Here's how this works. The game has two rounds of 15 questions worth up to 10 points each. The first round is a free-for-all. Each of you has a buzzer, which will be activated when I finish reading a question. Whomever buzzes in first will get the chance to answer, and if you answer correctly, you'll get all 10 points. But if you get it wrong, the next person who buzzes in is going to get the chance to steal. Now, like I said, each question is worth up to 10 points. It pays to be first. If you're not the first person to buzz in, even if you answer correctly, you're only going to get five points. So if everyone's ready, let's play Prop Quiz. Here's your first question. This array of lights is called a PAPI. It helps with landings, but what does the acronym PAPI stand for? Josh. Precision Approach Path Indicator. Precision Approach Path Indicator, that is correct. First on the board today with 10 points. Welcome, Josh. Thanks for coming back. A reigning champion from last week, but you're also a champion now. With something else as well, a little birdie has told me you got an award in the last couple of weeks here. Number one ACC award, number one YouTuber out there for aviation out at Stearman Field, Kansas. What is that? What, what is that award you got? Tell us a little about it. I uh, got a couple of them. The first one was uh, just for mo the most liked aviation video in uh, the first part of 2020. The other one was uh, the top or the, the, I was really the only person that did this, uh, hoping to have a lot more competition for this next year, but uh, best aviation accident prevention video series. And I did a, a series on how we can kind of change our flight reviews to address the problem of general aviation fatal accidents. And uh, it, was, it was a real honor to be there and be able to be a part of that and amongst a crowd of a bunch of amazing content creators in aviation and just get to rub shoulders with some really awesome people that I consider my friends. So it was cool. Good weekend. Well, that's fantastic. Fantastic. Welcome back and congratulations. Let's move on to our second question. In what TV show did Penny, frequently wearing a cowboy hat, fly a Cessna 310? Steve? It had to be Sky King. It was Sky King. Yes, sir. Again, 10 points for you, bringing you tied on the board with Josh already. Off to a really good start. Let's continue on. Charles Lindbergh's solo transatlantic flight ended when he landed in what country? Nathan. France. It was France. Yes, indeed. All three of you tied on the board so far. Off to a really, really good start. Congratulations. Let's take a look at our fourth question. Let's keep this going. See if you guys stay neck and neck for the rest of the show. In pounds, how much does one gallon of Avgas weigh? Nathan. That would be six pounds, Shirley. It is six pounds. Yes, sir, in the lead. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Besides, I want lasagna. I want lasagna for dinner. You are in the lead, Nathan, with 20 points. Good evening. Let's see if you know you this. Yep. What? Uh, doing well. Thanks, Nathan. Doing well. Thanks for being here with us tonight. What was the name of the first airplane to circumnavigate the Earth nonstop without refueling? Nathan. That would be the Voyager. It was, yes, it was. The Voyager, the Rutan Voyager, to be specific, but absolutely. The 
Voyager is correct. You are now pulling way ahead in the lead. 30 points if we look at our scoreboard. Josh and Steve tied with 10. Our next question is this. What term describes an aerodynamic stall that occurs under a loading of greater than 1G? Nathan again. What is an accelerated stall, Alex? <laughs> it is an accelerated stall. Yes, sir. 40, 40 points. <laughs> we are actually already eating through these round one questions pretty dang quickly here. It might be a pretty quick show tonight. What light sequence is projected from the beacon of a civilian land airport at night? Steve. Green, green, white, green, white, etc. It is green, white, alternating green and white. Yes, sir. Now, Steve, you had an accomplishment last week. You took your CF double I check right. How'd that go? I did. It went well. I got through it. Um, I, I feel like I got away with something. I mean, you know, you feel like that on any given check ride. It's the hardest you'll ever work sitting down. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad. Well, Nathan actually is about to go for his CFII check ride tomorrow. So you have any tips for him? Any tips or tricks or anything you want to scare him with for tomorrow? Yeah, I got a load of stuff I want to scare him with, but I mean, here's the thing. Most of, I did it in a 1978 Piper Tomahawk, all round slash uniform. You're probably going to fly a glass bird or something a little bit better equipped. But here's the thing, man. Understand your virtual, uh, understand your, if they talk about RNAV, LNAV, all that stuff, it really comes down to whether you've got vertical guidance coming from the satellites or whether the unit knows whether it's lost know your missed approach points, your decision heights, and other stuff on the on the charts. And the single most important thing, uh, the easiest thing to, you know, the night before when you figure that you don't know anything, go to your approach plate handbook and go to the key on your low altitude in route chart and just read through the symbology. You'd be shocked at how helpful that is. That's awesome. Thanks for the tips. Appreciate that, Steve. Hey, fly well on your ride. Thanks a lot. Well, Steve, like you said, you know, the night before, when he feels like he doesn't know anything, it is the night before, and right now Nathan's in the lead. So I'd say that bodes pretty well for him tomorrow. Let's take a look at this picture and this next question. On which Caribbean island does this famous runway approach exist? Steve? I want to say St. Martin. It is St. Martin. Maho Beach, St. Right. Martin. Yes, indeed. It's a bucket list item for me one day. I'd love to go and... Stand on that beach while a, while a jet comes in. Probably not when one takes off. Kind of don't want to get blown into the sea, but I'd love to see <laughs> one land there. <laughs> might be in a famous 1955 publicity stunt, who was the Boeing test pilot that rolled his 707 for the cameras? Steve. Tex Johnson. It is Tex Johnson. Yes, indeed. Alvin Tex Johnston. And uh, he got in a lot of trouble for that, too. A lot of trouble. Well, Steve, you are now tied with Nathan for those 40 points. Joss is uh, right there on the board with 10 points. On an airport diagram, you see an area surrounded by a red circle. What does it indicate? Josh. That's a hot spot. It is a hot spot. Yes, indeed. Let's take a look at our next question. We're starting to wind down. We're starting to run out of questions in round one. We've Tunnel through this pretty quickly, guys. What FAA regulation requires a pilot to learn all information relevant to a particular flight? Steve. 91-103. Is 91-103. Absolutely. You are now in the lead. Something I've noticed is uh, for the first time through all our testing and through our last episode, we were almost done with round one, gentlemen. We don't have a single wrong answer on the board yet. You guys are crushing it tonight. World War I ace Eddie Rickenbacker and astronaut Frank Borman both ran the same airline. Not at the same time, but still. What airline was it? Steve. Eastern. It is Eastern Airlines. Yes, indeed. You're starting to pull ahead there. On the board, we've got 20, 40, and 60 points. Staggering it up there. Departing runway 27. Departing runway 27. You experience a 20 knot wind from 300 degrees. What is your crosswind component? What 
is your crosswind component, Steve? Five knots. Not five knots. Oh. No, sir. Sorry about that. Anybody else? There's a tip for you. You don't actually have to do any math for this one. I'll give you another 10 seconds. Nathan. 30 degrees. Nope. nope. All right, we're out of time for this question, gentlemen. The correct answer is 10 knots or half of 20 knots. And there's a little trick here. Let's see if I remember it right. There's a little trick, but we've got 30. Uh, well, you know what? I don't even remember it off the top of my head. And I'm not going to say the wrong thing and somebody try to quote me on their check ride. Let's just move on to the next question. These aerodynamic veins are found on the upper surface of some wings. What are they called? Josh. Vortex generators or VGs. Vortex generators is correct. I would have said vortex manipulators because I'm a Doctor Who fan, but that would have been the wrong answer if I had done that. Yes, but Josh, you been. are catching up. You're just behind Nathan. We are almost, almost done with this round, almost to our multiple choice questions. What was the model name for the Cessna 177? Josh. That's the Cardinal. It is the Cardinal, the Cessna 177 Cardinal. Absolutely. Great job, everybody. That is the end of round one with Steve in the lead with 60 points. When we come back, choices abound with round two. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Russ Still, and I'm your chief flight instructor here at Gold Seal. Gold Seal is a comprehensive ground school covering everything from your FAA knowledge test to your final check ride. It's quite different from any other private pilot program. We mix exciting video with interactive segments and 3D animations. These may be in the airplane, in the hangar, or in a virtual 3D world. The result is a 21st century teaching machine that pulls you in and makes you a part of the experience. Now one question that I frequently get is, what's the best way to save money during flight training? The answer to that is an absolute, study at home. Before you go to a flight lesson with your flight instructor, study the ground school lesson really well. Not only will your CFI be impressed, he'll spend a lot less time trying to explain what you need to accomplish. And this means that you'll be paying him a lot less money. If you do your homework with Gold Seal, you will save cold, hard cash. Pass your written test and your check ride with Gold Seal, the Internet's number one ground school. Take a free test drive today and see how much fun learning to fly can be at onlinegroundschool.com. Welcome back to Prop Quiz. The end of round one left Steve in the lead with 60 points against Nathan and Josh tied for 40. It's time for round two, which means it's time for multiple choice. Each question is going to have four answer choices, and when I finish reading the question, our contestants will pick choice A, B, C, or D. They'll have 10 seconds to submit their response, and when time's up, we'll reveal what they chose. As a reminder, it still pays to be first. The first person to answer can earn up to 10 points. All late answers will be worth five. Here we go. Our first question for round two is this. Which of the four left-turning tendencies is most noticeable in tailwheel airplanes? A, spiraling slipstream, B, asymmetric propeller loading, C, gyroscopic precession, or D, P factor? 10 seconds. All right, we're going to start our reveal off in this round with Steve. Steve, you said A. Is that right? I'm afraid not. Sorry about that, Steve. Not the correct answer. Let's go over to Josh. Josh, you also said A. Afraid not, Josh. Sorry. Over to Nathan now. Nathan, you have any better luck? You said C. Gyroscopic procession. And that is the correct answer. Yes, sir. The first five points on the board for round two. Good job. Josh and Steve, don't worry. We've got plenty of time left in round two and in this game. Which V-speed is represented by the bottom of the white arc? A, VS1, B, VSO, C, VFE, or D, VNO?
which V speed is represented by the bottom of the white arc. We're going to start with Nathan. Nathan, you said B, VSO. Absolutely. 10 points to you. Over now to Steve, who also said B, VSO. Again, correct. And over to Josh. Are we going to clear the board? We are. Josh, you said B, VSO as well. Cleared the board with that question. Excellent job. Let's continue on and keep it going. In the 1986 film, Iron Eagle, civilian Doug Masters hijacks a military fighter. What was it? A, an F-15, B, an F-14, C, an F-4, or D, an F-16? What kind of fighter was it in Iron Eagle? Let's again, Nathan, let's start with you. You said D, an F-16, yes, sir. Over now to oh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Josh. Josh, you said D and F-16 as well. And lastly, over to Steve. Steve, you said D. Once again, clearing the board. Fantastic. Interesting thing about this movie, though, because a whole lot of, a whole lot of factual errors here. First of all, uh, the F-16 is not an eagle. The F-15 is the eagle, and I'm pretty sure we don't have any fighters made out of iron. So, you know, all kinds of problems. Plus, how would he have gone all that way on one tank of gas? I don't think the Air Force would have helped him refuel in midair. Which celebrity is not a general aviation pilot? A, Jim Carrey, B, Brad Pitt, C, Morgan Freeman, or D, Dr. Phil? Which celebrity is not a general aviation pilot? Josh, let's start with you this time. You said A, Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. That is correct. He is not a general aviation pilot. Over to Steve. You said A as well. The Mask, yes indeed. And lastly, over to Nathan, who also answered Bruce Almaty, Jim Carrey. Yes, sir. Clearing the board. We're making up. Making up for that false start in this round. Everybody doing a great job. If we take a look at our leaderboard, Steve is in the lead with 75 points. Nathan right behind with 70. And Josh right behind that with 60. Everybody is still really close and still has plenty of time to come out ahead in our second episode tonight. Prop quiz. The top of a Lycoming or Continental piston cylinder is called the what? A, the head. B, the rocker box cover. C, the apex. Or D, the fuel injector. Let's see if we can keep our streak going. We're going to start our reveal with Josh. Keep it going. Keep our good answer. No, there went our streak. Oh, darn. I'm sorry. That is not the correct answer, Nathan. You said B. Yeah, that is correct. Rocker box cover. Yes, indeed. Bringing you those five points. And lastly, over to Steve. I'm sorry, Steve. You also answered A. Fell into that same trap. It was the rocker box cover on both Lycoming and Continental Piston Cylinders. Let's see if we can redeem ourselves here. What is the latitude at the North Pole? A, 90 degrees, B, minus 90 degrees, C, 180 degrees, or D, zero degrees? Let's see if our CFIs tonight are also geographers. Josh, you said A, 90 degrees. That is the correct answer. Yes, sir. I hear you are coming back. Over to Steve. Steve, you also said A, 90 degrees as well, bringing you up to 80 points. And lastly, over Nathan. Nathan, you said A, 90 degrees as well. We've got Steve and Nathan tied for 80 points. Josh goes barely behind with 70. Um, what do you think? I think Josh might catch up here. Which of the following is a secondary flight control? A secondary flight control. A, the magneto system. B, the APU. C, the retractable gear. Or D, the trim system. Which of the following is a secondary flight control as opposed to a primary flight control? Nathan, you said D, the trim system. Are you right? I think you are. And our games are agrees. D, the trim system is a secondary flight control. Josh, you said D as well, the trim system. Absolutely. And lastly, over to Steve. Steve also answering D, the trim 
trim system. Excuse me, I've forgotten how to speak English. Meanwhile, our contestants are back to clearing the board. On a standard day, what barometric pressure would you expect to find at 3,000 feet MSL? A, 27.13, B, 25.92, C, 30.13, or D, 29.92? All right, what barometric pressure on a standard day are you gonna find at 3,000 feet MSL? Nathan, you answered first, and you got it correct, which also means you're the first person to break 100 points in today's episode. Absolutely, <laughs> 25.92, congratulations. Next, we're gonna go on over to Josh. Josh, you said A, sorry, no Josh. And lastly, over to Steve. Steve, what did you answer? You answered B, 25.92. Again, the correct answer, you're inching closer to hearing that special 100 points tone yourself. Let's continue on and see who gets there first, Josh or Steve. In 1986, Dick Rutan flew around the world in the Voyager, the aforementioned Voyager, I might add. Who was his co-pilot? A. Branson, B. Yeager, C. Barnes, or D. Wagstaff? All right, who was Dick Rutan's co-pilot in the Rutan Voyager? Nathan, you said B, Jaeger, absolutely. Not Chuck Jaeger, actually, it's a different Jaeger. Over to Josh, Josh, you said C. Sorry, Josh, no, sir. Over to Steve, what did you say? Steve, you also said C, I'm afraid not. Sorry about that. I think Steve's giving in to peer pressure here. Whenever <laughs> Josh or Steve get one wrong, they both get it wrong with the same answer. You guys cheating somehow with 500 miles no. in between you two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, he, would, he would have to be my peer first. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said to talk smack. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, what Vietnam era fighter bomber was known as the Thud? Speaking of smacks, known as the Thud. A, the F-150. B, the A-4. C, the F-4. Or D, the F-105. All right, we're gonna start out this time with, oh, I feel like starting with Josh. Josh, you said C. I'm afraid not. No, sir. Let's go over to Nathan. What did you say? You said D, the F-105, which is the correct answer. And lastly, over to Steve. Steve said D, the F-105 as well. Thankfully, nobody said the F-150. Although Ford did used to make airplanes. That's how we got the Ford Tri-Motor. The F-150 is not a plane. It's not an aerial vehicle unless you really mess up. All right, here's our next question, everybody. And it's going to take me a second to be able to read it because I looked into a light and now I can't read the teleprompter. In a slipping turn, the tail moves where? A, 90 degrees to the turn. B, outside of the turn. C, inside the turn. Or D, counter to the turn. All right, let's reveal our contestants who right now can read much better than I can. Nathan, you answered with what? You said B, I'm afraid not. Sorry, Nathan. Let's go on over to Steve. Steve, you said C, inside the turn. He is correct, yes sir, and there you are with 100 points. Congratulations, and lastly on over to Josh. Josh, you said C, inside the turn as well, and you're gonna be hearing that tone pretty soon yourself here. I'm quite sure of it. Hopefully. All right, guys, we are well more than halfway through our second round. The show's winding down. Let's see who is going to take home our $500 cash prize today. After serving with NASA for over 25 years, what astronaut went on to win the Reno Air Races? A, Hoot Gibson, B, Buzz Aldrin, C, Buck Rogers, or D, Flash Gordon? After serving with NASA for over 25 years, one astronaut went on to win the Reno Air Races. Nathan, you came back with A, Hoot Gibson. That is correct. Yes, sir. Hoot Gibson, indeed. Josh, you said C. 
Sorry, Josh. No, no such luck. And lastly, over to Steve. <laughs> Steve, you said, hey, Hoot Gibson as well. You are, you're, you're staying up there with Nathan. You're not far behind him whatsoever. And you could still win this thing, Steve. Let's continue on. Because Magnetic North is different from True North, what do pilots have to consider? A, the Great Circle. B, the Prime Meridian. C, Magnetic Variation. Or D, Magnetic Deviation. 10 seconds. All right, this is a devious one. See what I did there? All right, Josh, you said C, magnetic variation. Was that correct? It was indeed bringing you up to 90 points. You are scoring better than my awful jokes are. Nathan, you said C, magnetic variation as well. And lastly, over to Steve. You also said C, magnetic variation. We're back to clearing the board, gentlemen. You're doing a fantastic job. We're almost done. Winding down now, almost done. What measurement determines the stability of the atmosphere? A, atmospheric pressure, B, surface temperature, C, orographic index, or D, the actual lapse rate. Alrighty, let's see if, alrighty, excuse me, let's see if we, if we clear the board with this one, Nathan, you did absolutely, D. Actual rap lapse rate is correct. Steve, you also said D, the actual lapse rate. You're drinking your coffee, which is what I was I were doing right now, but I forgot to grab it. It's still in the kitchen getting cold. And lastly, Josh, you said D, actual lapse rate as well. Again, clearing the board. Gentlemen, this is it. We are at our final question of this episode of Prop Quiz. For weather reporting purposes, into what increments is the sky divided? A, thirds. B, fourths, C, eighths, or D, tenths. Ten seconds. All right, gentlemen, this is for the win. Weather reporting purposes, how is the sky divided? Nathan, you said C, eighths, absolutely. Next, we go to Steve. Steve, you said B. I'm sorry, no, sir. And lastly, lastly over to Josh. Josh said A. I'm sorry, Josh, that was not the correct answer. However, that is the end of our second round, meaning with 150 points, Nathan is the winner. That's tonight's game's going home with our $500 cash prize. Steve came in second place with 115. He gets to walk away with that 200. Join us next time to see if Nathan's luck keeps going. I'm Ethan Berg. Good night.